Hello friends and welcome to the first episode of Wonder May, a month where we'll be taking a look at the Wonder Woman Lego sets such as this one and the new Wonder Woman vs. Cheetah set, as well as an unboxing of many of the Wonder Woman action figures that are coming out this month, as well as some old ones. The Wonder Woman 1984 movie was supposed to originally come out next month, so this month sees the release of everything new for DC's Amazon Goddess. Today we're going to be taking a rebuilt look at the Wonder Woman Warrior Battle set from Wonder Woman 2017. So without dragging this on, let's just dive into it. Released in 2017, surprisingly in the same month as the movie it was based on, Wonder Woman Warrior Battle was the only set to be released in conjunction with this movie. And for a movie that didn't have much that you could consider comic book, I feel like LEGO hit it perfectly with this set. The first thing we're going to take a look at is this, Steve's monoplane that comes with this set. In the movie, Steve Trevor stole this airplane from a German base he had infiltrated and crash landed it on the shores of Paradise Island. Here, LEGO has given us a fantastic replica of that plane. Size and design-wise, I think it is nearly a perfect representation of his plane, which in the movie was a Fokker Eindecker. Eindecker being German for simply monoplane. In the era of the biplane, the Eindecker was a unique sight in the skies over Germany. And if you look at pictures of the Eindecker side by side with the LEGO model, you can see how accurately the designers at LEGO were when they designed this piece right down to the coloring. There is one major deviation from the Eindecker's historical counterpart, and that is right here. On the LEGO model, the Eindecker is displayed with the American star on its wings and tail rudder. Historically speaking, this is obviously inaccurate, and being a product of the German army, it should bear the Iron Cross, not the American star. Now, having said that, I totally get why LEGO didn't want to put the Iron Cross on their model, but I felt it was something that needed to be addressed. All of these stars, by the way, are stickers, not printed pieces. A few features worth pointing out on the monoplane include a moving tail rudder. On the fuselage of the monoplane are two stud launchers that represent the machine guns mounted on the fuselage of its historical counterpart. Underneath the wings are a pair of flick missile launchers. It has no historical counterpart here, but it does give an added level of play value to the model. One last thing I'd like to point out are the front landing wheels. LEGO opted to use these wheel elements from their wheelchairs to represent the front spoked landing wheels, and I think it looks great. And finally, here in the cockpit, we have a 1x2 printed slope piece for the gauge panel. Now, this piece isn't anything we haven't seen before. In fact, it's a rather common for LEGO, but it is printed, and I genuinely prefer that over stickers, so I just wanted to call attention to it. I always appreciate a printed piece when LEGO puts one on a set. Next up, we have the God of War himself, Ares. Ares is a brick-built giant fig that doesn't look like any version of the DC Comics Ares that's ever been on the page. It does, however, mimic the Mattel DC Comics Multiverse 10-inch Build-A-Figure. This design is completely unique to the 2017 movie line of figures. It does not, however, represent Ares in the movie himself. If I was a betting man, I'd say WB sent out this look for Ares to try and keep the big reveal of who he actually was under wraps. Toys have a habit of spoiling movies, especially superhero movies, so they have sent out false images to base the toy off of to avoid spoilers which is fine by me because this version of Ares is a lot more intimidating and interesting than what we got in the movie. Interestingly enough, this version of Ares was in some deleted scenes of Justice League in the flashback fight against Steppenwolf. Ares is a typical giant fig that is basically a brick-built minifig with all the typical minifig articulation. His legs pivot at the hips. The head moves right and left and can be turned to full 360 degrees. Ares' helmet is slightly articulated as well. The arms are more articulated than a standard minifig, with small ball joints at the shoulders as well as the wrists both twisting and pivoting. This gives the giant fig slightly more dynamic posing possibilities. Once built, Ares does look great, so much so that I'm glad they went with this design over what we were given in the movie. I think the color scheme is great, and he does have a suitably imposing presence when put next to standard minifigs. For as much as I like this build of Ares, I do have a few criticisms. First. Every bit of printing you see on this figure is a sticker. You can even see a corner of the chest sticker curling up already. The detail on his helmet and even his face printing are all stickers. It would have been nice to get some printed pieces with this set, and it would have been especially nice if they would have been on Ares, especially the face printing. Second, there's the sword and shield. Rather than just be standard gray, this is a place where Leo could have added a bit more color to the figure. The Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure saw Ares with a red sword and it would have been really something to stand out if this sword piece, likewise, would have been red in color. The shield, for as large as it is, is incredibly featureless. Maybe if they could have put some sort of pattern on the disc, like Wonder Woman's shield, which we'll be taking a look at in a moment, 
or even if it was a sticker. Or they could have just molded the piece in black. Also, and this is a minor thing, the back of Ares is nothing but anti-studs. It would have been a better look to smooth this out and make Ares a more complete figure. There are too many figures that come with this set. Steven Trevor, the World War I spy and fighter pilot that crashed on the shores of Themyscira, and of course Princess Diana, the Wonder Woman herself. First, we're going to look at Steve, and if I'm being honest, he is definitely the better of the two minifigs. In fact, he's probably one of the best minifigs I own. Take a look at his torso printing. It's actually pretty highly detailed from the front, showing various different layers of clothing, like how he wore in the movie. He has his turtleneck under it all, his blue button-down shirt, and his green coat with his belt across the waist underneath. All in all, I think this is a great, highly detailed torso printing. You can even see the texture of the printing across the belt. On the back, we have the furred collar along the back of his coat, as well as the belt across the lower back, cinching the coat at his waist. I seriously can't express how much I love the torso printing of this figure. For portrait printing, we do have two faces for Steve. His normal face is a smirk that is very Chris Pine, and the second one is his battle face. For accessories, Steve comes with a revolver that we saw him use to great effect in the movie. Actually, he came with two revolver elements when the set was new, but I can't find the other one right now. And he comes with two headpieces. His brunette hairpiece that looks amazingly like the hairstyle that Chris Pine wore in the movie, as well as coming with a brown pilot's helmet complete with goggles. Now, I think the first time we saw this element in use was Anakin's pod racer helmet in the early Star Wars prequel sets, but I don't think that we should hold that against it. All in all, I really love this figure. The second minifigure we get with this set is, of course, Princess Diana, Wonder Woman herself. Now, getting this out of the way first, yes, this is basically the same minifig that was released with the DC Comics Heroes set, Heroes of Justice, Sky High Battle. The biggest difference is that this minifigure is closer to Wonder Woman's true colors being a brighter shade than the Sky High Battle release of the figure. First off, the torso printing of this figure is very, very good, both on the front and back. The lines of her armor and blue leather skirt, the brown leather straps across her body that would be the baldric that holds her sword and shield in place, on her wrists, she wears her armored bracers. And finally, there are the metallic gold highlights along her waist, chest, and down her spine and back. On her feet, there is gold fringe along the tops of her boots and her gold circlet. I love that they got rid of the tiara-looking headpiece and gave her a circlet. If you look at this piece, I appreciate that the circlet is painted on the headpiece instead of being integrated into her hairpiece like it is on previous Wonder Woman minifigures. For face portraits, Diana has two. Her first face is her normal look with a bit of a turn on her lip giving her a cute little grin, very reminiscent of Gal Gadot. Her second portrait is one that I like a lot. This grimacing battle face that to me looks so much like the expression of Gal Gadot's face in the scene where she flipped a freaking tank. For accessories, Diana comes with her sword and shield. I appreciate this because typically Wonder Woman comes with her golden lasso, and we have received so many Wonder Woman figures with the lasso that it's refreshing getting a version of her with sword and shield. And I love the shield, with the print on it that mimics what she had in the movie. For headpieces, she has her long mane of hair, and I love this hairpiece. I'm not 100% certain of this, but I believe this piece is unique to Wonder Woman, and I love how full and flowing it is. Her second headpiece is this a hood and cape combination that fits so well with the character. Looking under the hood, we can see the circlet peeking out from underneath, and this is why I like the circlet being printed on her headpiece instead of the hairpiece. You can still see it when the hood is on. The cape and hood piece here is blue, even though it was brown in the movie. I think in Lego format, if the cape and hood was brown, it would have been drab and lifeless and wouldn't have looked as good. It wouldn't have popped as it does here, so I feel putting color in the cape was a good choice. But what I would have really liked to have seen is this cape and hood being red, matching up with the cloak that she wears in the comic book. A few criticisms of this figure include her sword. While I appreciate that Wonder Woman was packaged with sword and shield rather than a golden lasso, I however feel that the sword is very plain. There's nothing about it that makes it stand out. She's wielding a sword called the God Killer. You gotta make it stand out a little bit, Lego. My plan is to check out Brick Warriors and see what they have for sword accessories and get her a new one. My second issue is this, right here, and we see this a lot in the Wonder Woman minifigures. Across the top of her torso, across the top of her back, and her legs, the flesh tone paint hasn't been applied heavily enough, giving her a pink tone where her skin should be. This comes from the flesh tone paint not being applied heavily enough, 
and the red mold of her body piece bleeding through. This is very disappointing that they can't seem to get it right. And not just with this minifigure, but we've seen this on other minifigures many times when they attempt to try to paint flesh tone over red. They never seem to be able to hit it right. The Wonder Woman Warrior battle set may seem basic at first glance, but I feel it was definitely a set worth taking a second look at, and one that was well worth the money when it came out. And when you look at the price to part ratio, it's a little on the high side, but still falls within the typical price range of LEGO sets. I hope you enjoyed this revisiting of the Wonder Woman Warrior battle set and the start to Wonder May. We have much more coming for you down the line, taking a look at some of the Wonder Woman action figures next, as well as the Wonder Woman minifigs. Also, keep an eye out for the continuation of the LEGO Series 20 and Halo Battle for the Ark blind bag sets. Play well, everyone, and as always, thank you for watching.